Hey saddle hunters, thanks for tuning in and watching another video here on the Saddle Hunting channel on YouTube. In today's video, we're going to compare saddle hunting platforms. And we're going to do that by using three pretty popular platforms to talk about and compare a lot of the features that are available on most of the platforms out on the market. Now, when a guy goes to choose a platform, there's a ton of different options. And so it's kind of hard to decide, well, how do I compare this platform to this platform? And where do I draw the lines when I want to make comparisons? So for ease of understanding, what we're going to do today is break platforms down into three categories based on weight. We're going to look at small platforms. These are going to be any platform on the market that's under three and a half pounds. As an example of that category, I'm going to use the super popular and probably the uh, original platform, the Tethered Predator. Other platforms that you'll find in this size range, and this list isn't meant to be exhaustive, it's just to give you some examples, but other platforms in this size include the Predator, the Out on a Limb Podium, the Tree Hopper Tree Suit, and the Out on a Limb Scout Solo. The next category that we're going to look at, we're going to call medium platforms. And these are going to be platforms anywhere between three and a half and just under four and a half pounds. As an example of that category, I am going to use the Wild Edge Battlement. Other platforms on the market in the medium category include the Trophy Line EDP, the Out on a Limb Ridge Runner, the Tethered Predator XL, and of course, this Wild Edge Battlement. And then we finally are going to move up to large platforms. I'm going to use the Cruiser Seeker as an example of a large platform. Other options in the large platform category, and these are going to be any platforms above four and a half pounds. But other options in that category include the Lone Wolf Custom Gear Kunert's Ambush, the Cruiser Seeker, the XOP Edge, and the Out on a Limb Ridge Runner XL. So we're gonna use these three platforms to represent those categories split up by weight. And we're going to compare a couple of different things. We're going to look at attachment methods. So most of your platforms on the market use a cam style attachment method with a post. We're gonna compare that to the out on a limb bracket that this Wild Edge Battlement uses. And those two attachment methods will cover most of the platforms on the market. So we're gonna compare how they attach to the tree. We're gonna talk a little bit about the width of some of these platforms. We're also going to look at packability. How do they wear into the tree? How do they pack on your pack based on size and things like that? We're also going to look at the positioning ability of these platforms and talk about what features you might wanna look for in a platform that will help you shoot essentially 360 degrees around the tree if you would like to using your platform. So uh, let's jump into it. As a reminder, we're gonna break it down based on weight. We're gonna look at how they attach to the tree. We're gonna look at how they pack and we're going to look at how you can use them to position around the tree. All right, so let's talk about packability of these platforms. Another reason I've chosen these three platforms is because they're three different widths. So by looking at these, you'll get a broad spectrum idea of, of how wide particular platforms are and how much space they're gonna take up in your pack. So one of the advantages I think of a small platform is obviously that they're light, that makes them more packable. They're also usually very compact. You can see here this Predator when wrapped up is very, very thin and it lays nice and flat. So this is the pack that I hunted with last season. This is an Aberla Stock F1 mainframe with two batwing pouches on it. I've got a video on this, I'll link to it above, but this has been a, a great pack. It packs almost anything on the market with ease. It's a frame pack and so it just carries load well. But I'll give you an idea of how the Tethered Predator sits on here. It sits on here very easily. It can, it's not any wider than the pack. One of the things you, I'll note is that you will notice that even amongst the same weight category, platforms will vary widely as far as how wide they are. This Tethered Predator is just shy of 12 inches wide. So this is a super easy uh, platform to, to pack. Basically, I'm just gonna throw it on there. I'm gonna run my strap around, cinch it down tight, and just 
you can see it's not any wider than the pack. Very flat, very easy to pack. If you use a small backpack or something like that, these small platforms typically fit very, very easily. Um, this a burla stock is nice because it's got these two pouches. I can even open those up, put the platform in the back, close them up to kind of help contain it a little bit, silence it, and then cinch it down. So a lot of options for packability with these small platforms. Let me show you now how the Wild Edge Battlement packs. So here's the Wild Edge Battlement. You'll see that this is actually the widest platform of the three. It's 16 inches from tip to tip. And you can see from a side view, it's a little bit deeper. And the out on a limb bracket isn't as compact as most of the cam and post style platforms on the market. So I point that out to say that uh, most of the out on a limb products that use this bracket probably aren't gonna lay as flat as some of the other options. Now you can see if I put this on my pack that way, it sticks out probably three inches on, on either side. Um, still pretty easy, I have found, to, to strap it down. It, with this pack, it just holds everything very securely, so it's not a problem. Uh, this platform and, and others like the Ridge Runner that don't have flat edges are harder to pack vertically because it's it's got this point, or the Ridge Runner's got just that little rounded edge on it. Uh, same thing with the podium probably going to be a little bit more prone to wobble now that's not to say that I can't run my straps around like this but you can see there even that way it is wider it's wider than this pack and it's certainly not as flat as the Predator just a little bit more awkward to pack so hopefully that gives you an idea let's move on I'll show you how the Cruiser Seeker fits on this pack so here's the Cruiser Seeker this platform is about 14 inches wide and you can see it uses that cam and post style and once again it's pretty thin, lays pretty flat, has very boxy edges on it as well. So this platform is going to be much like the battlement and then it's going to be a little bit wider than the pack. So if I put it on there, it's obviously going to overhang each side. Now I can still cinch it down pretty tightly without a problem. It lays flatter than that wild edge bracket which is nice. I can move it and stack it vertically. It's got nice flat sides. You can see that way it's even uh, narrower. So it will pack even better that way. I can just cinch it down pretty tight. But you can see that's 14 inches. The largest platform that we're going to talk about is the Trophy Line Mission. The Trophy Line Mission is about 18 inches. So it probably comes up to about there. These large platforms are very tough to pack if you're running a backpack or a fanny pack something like that they just they're harder to fit inside a lot of packs that are out there on the market today which is one of the reasons why i like running a frame pack they're bigger and they carry large and bulky loads a lot easier than other packs that are out there so hopefully that gives you an idea of how a 12 inch platform packs how a 14 inch platform might fit how a 16 inch platform might fit as well as how the different style brackets might lend themselves to be packable or to be not packable. So uh, let's put these platforms on a tree and see how these various brackets and attachment methods compare. All right, so now we're gonna compare attachment methods. We're gonna look at kind of the cam and post style and compare it to the out on a limb bracket. See which one may be easier to hang. We're gonna use the tethered predator as an example of this style. I just like to keep my strap wrapped around it. So we're gonna loosen it up. You can see this is probably a very typical tree for a lot of guys who at least hunt in the Midwest, nothing overly large, nothing super small. So I'm gonna take some length out. I find that that's just easier when hanging any platform for that matter. With these style platforms, I like to pass it around the tree. I just feel like that's easier for me, especially if it's a large tree. So I'm gonna pass it around, put it on the front, take my strap. You can see I've got it pretty close. I'm gonna loop it over the button, trying to keep the platform portion as uh, vertical as I can, and then I'm gonna tighten it down. And I'm gonna try to keep the strap straight all the way across the tree and level, cinch that down as tight as I can, get the platform straight, and then I'm gonna seat it. And to seat it, I'm just gonna pull down on it as hard as I can, and then cam it over. And that's ready to go, very rock solid. 
and uh, just really easy, really fast method. So let me show you now the out on a limb bracket. All right, so here's the wild edge battlement. You can see, once again, I've got it wrapped up. I'm just gonna unwrap it. And once again, I'm going to take some length out of this because it's way, way, way too long for this tree. Once you do it a few times and put it around some trees, you can really eyeball it fairly closely. So with these brackets, you can see they're rounded at the top. What you're gonna do is open the platform up and stick it against the tree like that, and then you're gonna run your strap around. So, it's gonna come to your tree, stick it up like that. I will typically either hang it from my lineman's belt with a night eyes gear tie that's attached right here, and you can see that in my Wild Edge Battlement review, or I'm gonna stand in front of it and put it against my chest. While I run the strap around the tree, All right, so now the strap's around the tree. I'm going to pivot it this way just so you can see what happens. And then you're going to loop the ear over the ear, cinch down that castration band that's on there, pull it tight as you can. I'm going to move it back to the center, more square part of the tree here, but cinch that down as tight as you can, and then you pull up and you pivot it over and down. And that's all there is to it so once again it's pretty easy to hang i haven't had a whole lot of problems with it sometimes you'll pull it up too far and it'll have a tendency to be tight and want to kind of bounce up like that i've not found that to be an issue though it um to me once you put your weight on it it's it's pretty solid there are a few more steps to hanging this it might be slightly more complicated but i don't think it's bad that being said let me show you an alternative way that you can hang this platform using a very simple product from Genesis 3D Printing. So Genesis 3D Printing makes a product called a strap stager. Basically a, a little 3D printed piece of plastic that slides over your strap, has an adjustment on the back here, and has bungee going through it with a hook on the end. And then on the other side of the strap, there's just another round loop of bungee and you're basically going to wrap it around the tree and hook these together. And what it does is it enables you to hang your strap before you hang your platform. Very cool option. Works excellent for this bracket, but you can also use it with any cam style of bracket on the market. So let me show you how this works. I'm just going to run it around the tree. You get it close. There's lots of, of, of give to it, so you don't have to be just perfect. But you just pull it across and hook it in and now the strap is on the tree and you can see I've got my loops right about where they need to be I can pick up my platform now hook it on cinch down both castration bands at this point I'm plenty close to where I want to be so I'm just gonna loosen the strap stager and drop it down below get it out of the way of the bracket Cinch it down, pull it up, cam it over, and it's done. So that's probably an easier option to hang the wild edge bracket. Let's look a little bit now about how these platforms compare as far as the adjustment that you can get in the leveling capabilities. So most platforms nowadays have some sort of leveling capability. And I just want to kind of compare generally what the leveling capability of this mag bracket might be against what a, a post and cam style might be. So this is with the adjustment dial all the way in. So that's about as low as it can go. So you can see you don't get a ton of downward angle with this particular bracket. Now, let me pick it up. We'll adjust it out here. This is a big nut. It's not captured, but you can kind of just reach your finger around the back and feel about as far out as it'll go. So there you can see that's up all the way. So you get a little bit of adjustment. I would say on this one, you know, if we hold it right there and now dial it in all the way, I'll try to keep my finger there, you know, probably, probably two, two and a half inches of adjustment. Not bad. Let me show you now how much adjustment you can get with just your typical post and cam style. 
right, so here's the predator on the tree with the bolt back all the way out to give it the downward angle. You can see, you can get quite a bit of downward angle out of this. And in my experience, that's been pretty typical of a lot of platforms of this style. Let me lift this up. We'll put the bolt all the way in. Obviously takes longer on this one because there's a whole lot more threads to tighten up. But there we are, we're all the way in now. And that's, that's as high up as it'll go. So I'll try to keep my, my fingers about right, right there. And now we'll take it all the way down and just kind of give you a rough idea of how much adjustment these have as far as inches of movement. I'm not gonna be super scientific because we don't have a tape measure, but you'll get the idea. So there we are, we're all the way out. And you can see probably slightly more than the other platform, maybe three inches or something. I think the difference between these two is that this platform seems, oh, actually that wasn't even all the way. So yeah, probably a, probably quite a bit more. I actually, I didn't have it all the way to seated. But you can see this style will typically downward angle a little bit more. Uh, I feel like the other platform gives you a slightly bit more upward angle. So that's just a quick comparison of the adjustments that these platforms have. Now we're gonna put all three of these platforms on the tree and talk a little bit about the positioning aids that are built into them. All right, so we're gonna get a look a little bit about the different positioning aids that can be built into a platform. This to me is one of the most important features on a platform, especially if you're planning on trying to shoot 360 degrees with a platform. Now, most any platform on the market can be used to shoot 360 degrees around a small tree. Uh, these positioning aids are just more helpful when you get to larger diameter trees. We don't have a super large diameter tree here. I would say this is very typical for a lot of guys. So it should give you an idea of a typical scenario. Now, the Predator doesn't have a whole lot for positioning aids besides those little maybe one to one and a half inch wing tips out on the front. Positioning aids are really helpful when you're trying to maneuver around the tree. So you can maneuver around kind of in a clockwise motion to shoot over to your weak side shots. Now what the primary is gonna allow you to do, you can put your boot out on that wing tip and, and push around it. And it works. No problems really at all. And when you're going around kind of in this clockwise motion and pushing with your outside foot, it's just a very natural type of movement. Um, when you go around the other side of the tree, now your outside foot is a little bit farther out. And to me, it's harder to push. You can't push on the back of the platform because if you do, it will have a tendency to rock up. So if I put my outside boot there, I can shoot. I just gotta do a little bit, you know, turn it in the saddle. So that should give you an idea of, of how those wing tips are positioned. You just basically are using your outside foot on these wing tips to position around and for most purposes, they, they work all right. Um, let me put the other bracket on the tree now. We're gonna look at the Wild Edge Battlement next and see how you can use that to position for a shot. All right, so now we're up here on the Wild Edge Battlement. And this platform is probably the most unique, uh, you know, set of positioning features of any platform that I've used. It's just very wide. And you can position around the backside of these so-called wings very easily. So let's do the same thing we did with the Predator, work around in a clockwise motion. Now, there's a little bit of a trick to getting switch from your inside foot to your outside foot, but you can get, put your outside foot right in that kind of triangle between the wing and the post part of the platform. Get your boot in there and it's just really, really solid. And you can position around and on this tree, I could shoot almost all the way to three o'clock. It's very easy, very natural to pivot around the tree with your boot in that kind of triangle. It feels very stable, and you're not worried about slipping out of it whatsoever. So to come back around the other side of the tree now, do a little footwork, same kind of thing. But what I like about this platform is now, I'm not forced to use my outside foot, I can use my inside foot. And so it just sits down in there very naturally into that V again, and I can pivot around 
to take every shot that I would want on this side of the tree. So um, I, I like this platform because to me, I can position most naturally using my outside foot when I'm going counterclockwise and my inside foot, or my rather my outside foot when I'm going clockwise and my inside foot when I'm going counterclockwise. So I really like this platform a lot for that purpose. Let's put the cruiser seeker on here and look at how it's designed to position around the tree. All right, so now we're gonna look at the positioning abilities of the cruiser seeker. This platform is kind of a hybrid of the other two. It doesn't have those tips out on the front, but it kind of has triangles toward the back that you can put your foot in and use to position. So let's move clockwise around. You see here, I'm basically putting my inside foot now into that to pivot around. And you, you could do the same thing with the wild edge. To me, I just feel like most of my pressure, like I like to be able to push off when I'm going this way with my outside foot, but you can accomplish it with your inside foot. So you just can't, I don't feel like you can lean quite, quite as far. Now I can do a little footwork. Problem is if you push on the back of it, it tips up. So I found that inside foot is just the one to go with for shooting clockwise. Now, opposite thing around this tree, we're gonna move around again. And once again, it's gonna be the inside foot. Just like the Wild Edge Battlement, very solid when I have my foot in there to shoot 360 degrees around the tree. So we've got differences on all three of these platforms. With the Tethered Predator, it seems like you're using your two outside feet. On the Wild Edge Battlement, for me anyway, you, you can use both your inside feet, but I like to use my outside foot and then my inside foot. On this platform, it's really designed so that your inside foot is used both times very natural feeling, um, not pluses or minuses one way or the other. It's probably gonna come down to personal preference, but I just wanted to show you guys how you can use the different features on these platforms to position. Now, that being said, in my opinion, these bigger triangles where your boot goes are just a lot more solid feeling than the wingtips on the Predator. When I put my boot in these triangles, they just don't feel like there's any way it's gonna slip out of there. And so for me, that's a feature that I like a little bit more than the wingtips on the Predators, but your mileage may vary. So last thing I wanna show you while we have the platforms on the tree is just give you an idea of, of boot size and platform space that, between these three platforms. All right, so here's an idea of boot size on the cruiser. As a reminder, this platform is about 14 inches wide and I have size 11 rubber boots on. I've got my feet right near the outside. You can see how much space I have between them. This platform, I can get most of my boot. You can see the back of my boot there, still on the platform. Most of my boot I can get on the platform. So very easy to stand up, to maneuver around on this platform. That's the advantage of these larger platforms is that you can stand up much like you can a tree stand. So hopefully that's helpful. Let me put the Wild Edge Battlement on here and I'll show you the foot room on that platform. So here I am on the Wild Edge Battlement. You can see I can stand right out on these wings. They support the middle of my boots. I find that to be pretty comfortable. As a reminder, this platform is 16 inches wide, so that should give you an idea about how far apart you can get your feet. Now, because they're the wings, want less support on your feet you can put them farther apart so that's kind of nice of course you can overhang your feet on any platform but this platform i found i can also stand up and turn around on uh, granted there's not as much support but i feel like the wings give me pretty good support to do that though i find myself putting more weight into my tether when i position on this platform than i do some of those other larger ones so that should give you a good idea of how much room you have on a 16 inch wide platform. So let's throw the tethered predator on here now. So here's the tethered predator. I have my boots lined up with the outside edge of the body of the platform. You can see it's much, much more compact. If I move them out to the outside of the wing tips, a little bit of space and good support there on the edge of the platform. I can fit most of my boot on this platform if I stay on the outsides of the post. So pretty good support. If I go to stand up on this platform, there's enough room, but twisting around gets a little bit trickier. It's just not quite deep enough. Now you can do it, but you're gonna find yourself grabbing the tree and your tether a whole lot more than maybe 
a larger platform. So if you're a guy that likes to stand up, it's certainly doable, but kind of like the wild edge battlement, you're gonna have to hold the tree or use your tether to kind of support you as you do those maneuvers. So hopefully that's helpful in giving you an idea in, in comparing the sizes of the small, medium, and large platforms. So that's a wrap up of my small, medium, and large platform comparison. My goal here was not to give you an exhaustive list of all the platform options out there, but just to point out some of the features that you might want to consider when thinking about buying a platform. I hope this has been helpful. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Saddle Hunting channel here on YouTube. Once again, I appreciate you guys' support and hope that you're getting ready for this upcoming hunting season.